Okay, another example. Now we are looking at shear moment diagrams. So what we want to do here is find the maximum moment. So I believe I've done this before in a video, but I believe it was incorrect to a degree in terms of the final answer. But the procedure is the same. So let's reattempt this by looking at the shear diagram and the original loading system and finding the maximum bending moment in kilonewton meter. So we're told that shear diagram is shown below for a beam. The maximum magnitude of the bending moment in the beam is most nearly what? So we have the following beam with the loading conditions. We notice that A, we're given the reaction moment and we're given the reaction at A, that's already solved. We have the reaction at C, we have a hinge as well. We have a distributed load and a load here at the end of 100 kilonewton. So based on this loading diagram, we can easily determine the shear diagram. In this case, it's given to us. And what we want to do is find the moment diagram. Because this in turn will help us determine the maximum magnitude of the bending moment. So what's the process here? The first thing I want to do is write or draw a line for our moment diagram. So let's draw this line here. And I want to make certain cu section cuts in the point of interest. Essentially discontinuity. So where things begin to t discontinue. Where like we have a non-continuous beam here. Where do we discontinue? It's going to be at B at C. So let's draw our lines there. So we just draw a straight line. All the way down at B here. And let's do another one for C. Okay. And at the end, we're just going to end. I'll just draw a line as well. And we have that. And this is the moment diagram. It will have units of kilonewton meter. And this is zero. We start at zero, go up is positive, go down is negative. So we're looking at drawing the moment diagram to at the end determine the maximum magnitude of the bending moment. So the first thing you should always do is find the area of each section. So we have to break this up into basic shapes. We have a rectangle, we have a triangle, triangle, rectangle. So we have four shapes essentially here. I'll denote this is A1, A2, a3, A4. So let's find these areas because we know the area of the shear diagram will give us corresponding values for the moment diagram. Because what we're doing is taking the area, which is kilonewtons, times the base, which is in meters. So the units are kilonewton meter. So the area there is going to be important. Let's solve for A1. And A1 will be 50 kilonewtons, which is the height of the shape, the rectangle, and the base of the rectangle is just 10 meters. So we take 10 meters base times height, which is the area of a rectangle, 10 meters times the height of 50 kilonewtons. So A1 equals to positive, because 50 is positive, right? It's above the zero, so it's positive 500 kilonewton meter and notice here this is the units for moment so that's a1 let's find a2 so a2 we take it's a triangle so the area is one half base times height so the base is this distance let's see what that distance is and that's not given that's when you have to use similar triangles so this distance is not given right it's not given what what we are given is to 10 meters we're given this entire distance right we're given this to to, to be the 10 meters so what i'm going to do is do similar triangles so i'm going to take this whole big triangle here and i'm going to draw it out here that whole big triangle so let me do that it's the big triangle and we know let's extract some dimensions it's 10 meters right this whole big triangle this triangle 
has a base of 10 meters, which we know that's given in the original diagram. So that's 10 meters. What's the height? What's the height of this whole big triangle? This triangle. The height is going to be the 50 plus this 150, right? So it's going to be 250. This height is 250 kilonewtons. So that's the big triangle. And what I'm going to compare this big triangle is, I'm going to compare it respect to this little triangle. This little triangle here. So this will have a base of X, right? This is what we do not know. So it would be somewhere here, this little triangle. It will have a base of X and the height is just this distance, right? So it's just the 50. So it's 50. So we know this whole distance is 250. And let me just denote this carefully. This 50. This is 50. Fifty. Fifty for the small triangle on the height. X is the base for the big triangle is two fifty. X is ten because we know it's ten, right? For that big triangle. So using similar triangles, you can simply do fifty over two hundred. We're comparing the heights. So on the left side it's height. On the right side we're going to compare the base B. So we take for the left side. I'm going to look at the small triangle, which is fifty, divided by the big triangle height, which is two fifty equals to now let's compare the bases for the tri small triangle is going to be x and the base of the big triangle is 10. now we can solve for x and if we solve for x we get 2.5 meters so what we just did is found this x distance right so we couldn't find the area a2 no we, we were stopped there because we did not have that x so x here is 2.5 meters so if we know this is 2.5 the whole thing here is 10 so this whole distance is 10 I can find this right it's essentially the base of this triangle so that is going to be 10 minus 2.5 so we get 7.5 okay so we have those those are going to be important all you do is similar triangles so there we can find a2 we take one half the base is 2.5 which is something we just found and we multiply by the height which is 50 right the height of this triangle small triangle is 50 so it's 50 kilonewtons so at the end we should get a2 equals to about i believe 62.5 kilonewton meter so we have a2 now let's solve for a3 equals to one half base times height one half the base is 7.5 meters the height what's the height there is negative 150 so you got to be careful it's this triangle right a3 it's negative 150 for that height from the top all the way to the top it's negative so keep the negative Keep this negative. Stick with the signs. Keep the negative. So A3 will be about negative 562.5 kilonewton meter. And now we're almost done. A4 equals to just the base times the height so the base for a4 is we know it's five meters the height is 100 right the base is five the height is 100 so we take five times 100 five meters times 100 kilonewtons and we get a4 equals to 500 kilonewton meter so let me highlight the ones we use the actual values this is a1 this is a2 this is a3 this is a4 so these values will help us arrive at the moment diagram we always need the areas there for the basic shapes so we have that the next step I suggest we use is to essentially draw the procedure that we're gonna apply 
to draw the moment diagram. So we call it, I'll just call it order of lines. And the, all this says is if we have a point load on the original diagram, let's say on the original loading system, if we have a point load, the next diagram under that will be a linear line. And if we have a linear line, the next diagram, sorry, a straight line, if we have a straight line, the next diagram will be linear. And if we have a linear line, the next diagram will be parabolic or quadratic. And if we have a quadratic, the next diagram will be parabolic, cubic. This is cubic. So straight line, this is linear. This is quadratic or parabolic. This is cubic. So straight line is just simply going to be y equals one. This is y equals one x. It's a linear function. This is, let's say y equals x squared. It's a parabolic or quadratic. This is a cubic y equals x to the third. That's what we mean there. And this is just a point load. So now let's see how we can apply this, the order of lines. So we know on the shear diagram for A1, we have a straight line, right? So this is a straight line. So where do we begin here on the order of lines? We will begin with a straight line. All this says is the next diagram, which is the moment diagram in this case, in this case we will have a linear line for the moment diagram. So in this region, A1 from 0 to 10 meters, we have to have a straight line, right? So here we have a linear line. So on the shear diagram, we have a linear line, which is this. Then the next diagram, it says we have to have a parabolic function or a quadratic. So that's what that means. So before we do all of that and draw the diagram, one important condition here is we have a fixed end and we have a fixed end moment, which is actually given. So this is somewhat tricky, but you just have to know on a fixed end, clockwise, clockwise, we always go up. And if it's counterclockwise, which is how it is in, in this case, we always go down. So at A, we have a fixed moment of counterclockwise, right? So we have to go down. The arrow is pointing down. It's telling us to go down at A. So the way we would do this, we start at zero. We're, we're told we have 500 counterclockwise at a, as a fixed end moment. So we have to go down negative 500. So this is where we actually start. Negative 500 kilonewton meter. Just know always at a fixed end, you either have to go up and down. And that depends on the sign of the moment. In this case, it's, it's counterclockwise. So we go down negative 500. So now we can proceed with negative 500 as the starting point. We always do in this case because it's a fixed end moment. So what do we do next? We take this negative 500 and we add area 1. We add area 1. So negative 500 plus 500 for area 1 there is just 0, right? So we start at five, negative 500 and go all the way to 0. And we know it has to be a linear line because we have a straight line here, a straight line, straight line tells us we have to have a linear line on the next diagram. So we take a line here and go all the way to zero. So it's simply just like that. So we just took care of this area. So now we're at zero. We have zero kilonewton meter. We add the next area, A2. So A2 there. So A2 will be the 62.5. So our next point will be somewhere here. And let me make sure we denote this line where we have a difference there that intersects. So we know we're going there all the way to 62.5, positive 62.5 kilonewton meter. So we start, take zero plus A2, which is 62.5 for this area. So we're at this point. So now we have to ask what kind of shape do we have for our moment line? So we know we have a linear line there. So we have a linear line and we know that linear line 
tells us the next diagram has to be parabolic or quadratic. So we have a quadratic, but now we have to ask, do we go like this or are we going like this? Do we start steep and in flat or do we start flat and in steep? In this case, we know the loading, if we look specifically, the loading will be high initially, high, high, then we start to decrease. So we start at a peak because we have the highest loading at this end, then we end flat because the loading decreases. So that's how you can think about that. So now we have to start steep because we have a high loading, high loading, high loading, then we end flat because the loading decreases towards this end as we get closer to the end. So that's how you can know if you start steep, in this case we start steep and flat to 62.5. So we just took care of A2. Now we start at 62.5 then add A3. So 62.5 plus negative 562.5 will, will get us to negative 500 if we add that. So we end back down here at negative 500. And we know for A3, we have what kind of line? It's a linear line, right? Linear line, let's use the order of lines again. We start at a linear line. The next diagram has to be a parabolic, right? Or quadratic. So now, do we start flat or start steep? You just watch this triangle. The load is low, low, increase, 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 increase. So we're adding a lot of load at this end. Essentially, we have the least less load at this end. So we start flat and steep. Start flat and steep. So let's do the start flat, 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 and we end steep. And we have a parabolic function. And now we finish off. We're at negative 500. We add area 4. We have to add this area. Area 4 is 500, so negative 500 plus 500 is 0, so it brings us back to 0 here. And we know now, are we linear, parabolic, what kind of shape? So notice, for A4, the line there is straight, right? Line is straight. So the line is straight, we start here, it tells us the next diagram, which is the moment diagram in this case, we have a, a linear line. So we just take here, we start at negative 500, and end at zero. So we have a linear line there and essentially we know we did this right because we ended at zero. So now let's extract what the question actually wants us to find. It's the maximum magnitude of the bending moment. So the maximum magnitude is just the maximum magnitude. So don't put the positive instead of the negative because we know the maximum is obviously the 500, right? So it doesn't tell us specifically if it's negative or positive. They just want us to find the maximum. So the maximum will be this value, right? So it will be 500. And it's going to be a negative bending moment. So it's going to be negative 500, and that's the maximum magnitude. So it should be B. And that's it for this. Thank you.